Welcome to Ridgecrest Talk. I'm your host, Tanya Pyle, and I'm excited to learn today about the upcoming Petroglyph Festival. So my guests are Maris and Doug Luke to fill me in on where we're at with that. And I want to thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah. And um, I want to start with you, Maris, I, because I learned that this whole event was sort of a vision you had. So mm -hmm. um, how, how did that come, how did you start thinking about uh, an the, event? The petroglyphs? Well, um, actually, when I was very young, my mother had told me about the petroglyphs, oh. and I became fascinated with them. Uh -huh. And then as I grew up, I learned more about them. And it happened that in 2007, the spring of 2007, Doug and I were working on a backyard project of our own, just cleaning up and redecorating our backyard. And of which um, I have a picture of, by the way. Oh, yeah. So uh, if I'm, I'm going to see if maybe our we can zoom in and get a picture okay. of that because it's neat. It's a neat picture of you doing some paintings of the petroglyphs. Mm -hmm which is not a petroglyph, by the way. What did your mother tell you a petroglyph was? She said it was chip designs and boulders by the Indians. Okay, yeah. so she had that right. Yeah, she had that right. And then, um, so we were working on our project in the backyard, and I decided that um, I wanted something unique and different, so I decided why not paint the petroglyphs on our fence. Right. And right. It would be different. And I'm not an artist, so it was easy for me to do because they're kind of like stick, stick figures and mm -hmm, things like that, mm -hmm. pretty basic. Mm -hmm. And so I had a, a lot of books from the museum, of course, and I used designs from there and started painting them on the fence. It's so yeah. cute. Uh -huh. yeah. I love the hands. These are your and Doug's hands. Yes. Well, I read in one of the books that it's actually my grandchildren. Oh, it, okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. I read in one of the books that uh, handprints meant important family. So I had all the grandchildren come over and put their handprints on the fence. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Very yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And um, so then uh, for someone who might not know, we kind of covered what a petroglyph is, but what... Um, these these are are um, what is your you seem to have a historic knowledge of mm -hmm. it from your mother you studied the history they're carbon dated about um, about ten thousand years mm -hmm. some are older uh -huh. mm -hmm. and some overlap each other throughout the years if you mm -hmm. go to the canyon and actually look at them mm -hmm. and they really are amazing it's amazing to see just to think that they back in that many years ago were chipping those boulders. Of course, it we is. don't know exactly what they mean. It's your interpretation, you right. know, they're, whether they're messages or story or, or what they are. Uh -huh. But um, that's but what's so fast. They've been preserved. They've been preserved all been these preserved. years. Thank goodness the base keeps them preserved so they haven't been vandalized uh -huh. and they're there for us to enjoy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. On Bureau yeah. of Land Management. Uh, yes. Or base, uh, it's base on the base, land. the Navy land. base. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, yeah. and they've been preserved by a process of the, the water just well, the water Spoiling actually the formed the patina, uh -huh. went over the rocks over mm -hmm. the years and formed the patina that made that enabled them to be able to chip that away to uh -huh. make the designs. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then you you were, uh, you said you brought up 2007, which was the year Doug started with the... Um, RECVB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Visitor Center. Yeah. And so when did you start <clears throat> talking to him about... about how valuable this would be as um, as an event or something for the community because in comparison you were looking at a, a you you brought a country woman magazine mm -hmm. or something yeah what happened was he um, was new to his position and he kept talking about wanting to beef up tourism and it happened that while I was painting these designs um, an issue the of Country Woman magazine came out, and this was 2007. And in that magazine was an article about the Grundy County Barn Quilt Project, and that was a Where's project. That? Well, it's in Iowa. Oh, okay. Uh, I was going to say yeah. most of those barns. I'm from the Midwest, so that is what I. Yeah, they're old to. tobacco <clears throat> barns. Mm -hmm. And what happened was a highway, a new highway, had come in and bypassed their community. Okay. So they were trying to think of an idea to pull travelers off the highway and back into their, their town. So what they did is they came up with the idea of, quil of uh, painting quilt patterns on old tobacco barns mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. making it a drivable loop. 
so tourists could come in, drive through, they could stop and eat, pick up souvenirs, whatever they needed, and get back on the highway. And it worked. It brought tourism. It, it um, People um, started um, thinking of wares they could sell, like T-shirts and hats and coffee mugs and things like that mm -hmm. with the barn quilts and calendars. And it ended up being a really big deal and it helped their community. So I had read the article and I thought, wow, that is amazing. They had a need. They created this unique idea of pulling traffic off the highway and coming into town. And I thought, well, why couldn't we do something like that? Mm -hmm. Doug's looking for a tourism idea. Mm -hmm. And that's how I came up with it. I mm -hmm. thought, well, we don't have quilts or tobacco barns, but we have petroglyphs and to me that was even better because mm -hmm. they're so historic. Right, mm -hmm. right. So but now this didn't get started until uh... Well we started on it but what happened was I told Doug about it. Uh -huh. Doug loved the idea uh -huh. and yes. so we started out slowly um, kicking around ideas. Doug um, helped me put a group together and the idea was we would put designs on buildings all over town. Oh, okay. And then at some point um, Kern County Board of Trade had Annie Hess um, came on with our group and was going to help us, giving us ideas, and we were going to try to do murals. And she suggested we do murals so they could be historic and high quality and, um, um, and concentrated in Old Town, which would make it a drivable, walkable okay. tour. So originally we tried doing that. But what happened was the murals are very expensive. They can be upwards of $30,000. And mm -hmm. Tehachapi does wow. them, but they put theirs out for bid. Our idea was to use local artists and keep it all local mm -hmm. and um, in hopes of helping the businesses and tourism. So um, then what happened was um, they decided to brand Old Town. And when that happened, a lot of people started losing interest in doing it because nobody was sure what it was going to be branded. And we were actually trying to brand it ourselves by doing the petroglyphs. So interest started to sway a little. So we decided we're going to go back to our original idea of all over town, keep it simple, put some billboards on the highway, do whatever we could. So we just kept talking to whoever would listen to us. And um, then it just sort of evolved from there. Mm -hmm. One day Doug came home and said, guess what? Uh, IWV Insurance put petroglyphs up on their building. And I said, oh my gosh, so I contacted them. I went over there, I dropped information on their doorstep, I called them, I found out who the artist was, which yes. happened to be Nick Knoll, okay. and he agreed that he would paint um, art on the buildings okay. for a donation to the animal shelter. So it had a dual benefit there. It okay. helped with us, it helped with the, you know, what we were doing, and it also helped the animal we're shelter. We're gonna come back after this mm -hmm. brief break and we'll hear more about the Petroglyph Festival. Thank okay. you. All right, thank you. Welcome back to Rich Crest Talk with Maris and Doug Luke. And uh, so we've learned kind of about your vision uh, for the petroglyphs and what it could mean to the community, bringing it into the forefront. And uh, then after <coughs> this, you said that uh, one of the, the former mayor, Dan Clark, yes. had a dream about the yeah, petroglyphs. I was, I was sitting in my office one afternoon, and he walked in through the door, and doors flew open. And at that time, I knew Dan. We have talked. We did a few things. But he wasn't a real close friend, but a mm -hmm. good friend. Mm -hmm. And he come through the doors like with smoke around him, and he, he said that uh, I had a dream. And well, what do you mean I had a dream? I had one last night too, you know. And uh, uh, he says, let's do a petroglyph festival. And, of course, I'm just sitting here, well, what in the world? So it all started from that. I went home, talked to Maris, and she said, absolutely, we've talked about that, and he wants to be involved in it. And he, wants to, he wanted to bring the city in on it. Wow. Otherwise, City B... Was, he, was this when he was the he mayor? Was, he, he, he was mayor. Okay. And okay. and so he wanted the city to come in on it with us, with the RACVB, as partners. Not as sponsors, but as partners. And we, we joined together in making a signature event out of it, which we have done that. So that's where it got started. And from there, it was hard work right up until November of, of last year. And we brought in about uh, 
13, 14, 15,000 people in the like Matrix, we, told us. Wow, 13, whoa, okay. And uh, we had about 100 and so vendors. We had, of course, at that time, Pow Wow over at Kermagee Center, uh -huh. which had about 30 vendors over there, plus the Pow Wow themselves. Mm -hmm. So it went very, very well last year. I remember it being a little bit controversial because some people involved in it were... Uh, you, it was a very bold move because you decided we're not going to do this a year from now. We're going to do it this year right. a, in about spring, right? Right. Our marketing people that we have that worked with us said that they have never done this. They always work two years out, okay. minimum of two years out yes. if you bring a dream forward. Right. So we, we said, look, we need to do this. And so they just said, okay. And so we, we fired up the old <laughs> boiler and away we went. It was a bold and, and move. It, and, it, and it did. Uh, but another thing we have talked about is the Native Americans. We had to bring them in too. We talked to all nine tribes. And we had to do a soft and landing with Dan them. And you said Dan had a lot of contacts with Yes, that. he did. He went and he talked to the tribes. We had several meetings and we brought them into the fold and they kind of guided us through this, how to set this uh -huh. up. And they were excited. Yes, they were. Yeah, mm -hmm. because yes. it's their history. Right, it's their it's, history. I mean, that's the yeah. understanding that d the dating has found, mm -hmm. that it has a lot of their work. Right, yeah, and so from there what we had to do is we moved it from the RICVB to, which is the mothership, to the Petrograph Education Foundation. Oh. And so with the Petrograph Education Foundation, now we go into STEM programs and we can mm -hmm. teach kids, we can educate people about what the petroglyphs are about in our valley. So we mm -hmm. wanted to move it away from, kind of away from the visitor center, although RECVB is the mothership, uh -huh. you know, but the festival is going to be a standalone. But it's with bigger its own, than that. With a, yeah, with its own 501c3. Uh -huh. So, okay, who's so, steering that? Well, basically our office, I'm oh. steering that at this point. Oh, okay. And my staff. Uh-huh. And a lot of great help. So you've got both. Uh, yes. Yes, and we have two different. <laughs> Multicasting. Right. We, we actually have two different boards. We have an RICVB board of nine, and then there's a Petroglyph okay. board of nine. Okay. So and there's a chairman of a board there and a chairman of a board on the other side. So they help run it on this side, and then my board does what they have to do with tourism and filming. Mm -hmm. So we got we got a big house. It's, uh -huh. it's got a full house. Yes, full house. <laughs> it's <laughs> busy. And uh, so it must be very rewarding to see this pick up, and, and this is your second year, our yes. second annual. Now, I, I have to say, I thought I would by now be seeing the the metal art in the medians well it's we're running a little bit behind but okay, but, but, but we were hoping to have one or two up i don't think it's going to happen it's really it's just a process we all okay. have to go through okay. i'm not on that board right but we've got two that's in the shoot is ready that more to go. the state is that more the state and they're well their it's, the, it's the or? it's the state and the city working together with oh, okay. with with the group with the committee and, and, with the committee. and they're doing the a meetings. they're doing a great job uh, sure it's just yeah. take, it's a lot of process, and once you see one or two go up, then you're going to start seeing it go much faster. Uh -huh. It's just kind of like you got to get the first one out, get it up, and then we understand the process. But it's all going to be petroglyphs. There's 18 of on, them on China Lake Boulevard. On China Lake Boulevard. Okay. There's 18 of them. Start the front gate all the way to about down there by Dollar Tree. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons Doug came up with the idea of painting the service boxes around town. If you notice, they're getting painted they're with petroglyphs nice. also. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. yes. We have a wonderful artist, Don McCauley, who's doing that. And Doug, um, after the park went in, we were looking for another project to do, and Doug came up with the idea of painting those boxes because he's mm -hmm. seen it done it, in other towns. And this was mm, something we could do. With and, their motif or whatever their theme is. Mm -hmm. We could get some of them in by oh. the festival, even though we couldn't get all the, the median art in like we had planned. So you, you had... Um, Olaf, um, Olaf, Olaf Dow, Dowd, who did the, the doing, art in the Petroglyph yes. Park. Mm -hmm. And then you had, uh, who was the gentleman who's doing the... Uh, Skip Gorman is the other Skip one. Gorman's Skip doing Gorman doing metal Skip Gorman is art. doing the, the metal. Mm -hmm. He's done the metal, but the... What were the boxes you were just talking about? Oh, that would be Don McCauley. He's Don doing McCauley. the service boxes. The service and Nick boxes. Knoll is the one who did the art on all the businesses. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's really mm -hmm. spreading everywhere. Yes, it is. We have wonderful people helping us. I can't say enough good about Don McCauley. He's doing yeah, a great job. And we job. want to thank your radio mm -hmm. station, KZGN, oh, sure. um, uh, Tanya, and, uh, and Keith, and, 
And Tom, with all the help that you guys have given us and support, you're, you know, Tom has always been right there for us. So mm -hmm. I just want to thank you and, and, oh. and your group. Okay. Well, thank it's you. it's our pleasure. It's mm -hmm. it's uh, wonderful to get to have this venue to share it with the community. When Tom and uh, Shannon opened mm -hmm. the TV station, that's the wonder of it. Is mm -hmm. that then the whole community gets to uh, share and sure. participate in um, and get get more of the message. Not everybody is going to pick up a newspaper. Some people are inclined to pick up a paper. Mm -hmm. Other people want to turn on the TV. Mm -hmm. And so sure. it's uh, it's wonderful be, be, to get to, to share this. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to know that the RACVB and the Petroglyph Education Foundation appreciates everything that you do. Oh, thank you very much. It's our and you're in my office all the time checking up on this, <laughs> making sure you're doing it right. Well, sometimes I stop in. With, I have a guest who's a, a guest to Ridgecrest, and so I'll stop into the Visitor Bureau and get some yeah, things to share with them. You sure do. We're getting ready to take a break here. We're okay. going to be back in just a moment, and okay. we'll talk about some of the events coming up for the okay. upcoming uh, Petroglyph. This weekend, the Petroglyph Festival yes, starts. Yes, it's on us. It's upon us. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll be right yes, back. Yes. Welcome back to Ridgecrest Talk with Maris and Doug Luke and our upcoming Petroglyph Festival. Yes. And it's I'm eyeballing your Ridgecrest Festival event fact sheets. Now people can stop into the Visitor Bureau or where can they pick these well, up? They, go, they go online, rpfestival.com, okay. and get it as well as we have it in the office. The hotels have some of it on their counters as well as some of the restaurants. Okay. All right. And uh, how is how is it looking in comparison to from this year's festival to last year's festival? Uh, more stress this year. <laughs> is we it? Got, we got a lot more going. Uh, right now, uh, it's this morning, we're at 130 booths. We're okay. actually oversold. We, we had planned at about 110, 115. So we've, but Mike Thomas has taken and found new spots on Balsam Street that will work with the police department and the fire department for safety reasons. I see. So we've added more to the venue, so we've got more people coming. We have a lot of vendors from out of town. We've got them from Arizona, New Mexico. Oh. We've got them coming in from uh, Oregon and Northern California. So we have a, we probably got 50, 60% of our vendors are from out of town right now. Oh, that's exciting. Very and, exciting. And, uh, now, yes. so the, the actual event is, would be the center of the event then is Balsam We're Street. All Balsam Street. All yes. Balsam Street. Yeah, because... We're starting at Ridgecrest Boulevard, okay. going all the way down to Argus. Okay. And, and that's where Lindsay's Furniture is. Okay. And now we may, if it keeps going, as I left the office, we have five more on the waiting list. Oh. We got this morning, and so we may move it down a little further. Not sure at this time. We may have to put them up on the sidewalk. Last but, year it was mostly at the Kerr McGee Center, right? No, no, we had it on Balsam Street. Oh, you did? Yes. Okay. There was a hundred, right under a hundred, I think, on Balsam Street last year. We had thirty. At, at the Kirby East Center. And you could walk across and from Balsam, walk across. across Ridgecrest Boulevard and over to the Right, Kirby and they're going to do the same thing this year. You're going to be able to go from to Pow Wow because there'll be vendors, there'll be Native American dancing going on. We'll have some uh, uh, teepees over there. We have the Kids Fun Zone over there for kids. So the, the Boy Scouts are, are manning that. We're going to have BLM, uh, which will have the uh, burros and wild mustangs will be there for adoption. Ooh. Ooh. And they were having Bill Schoenhorst <laughs> will be there with his at the old, Kermit, at the, the Kermigy Center. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow! And then we'll have a uh, Bill Schoenhorst will be there with his eighteen uh, hundreds uh, covered wagons, a chuck wagon. So he'll oh. be there on display. How fun! Now, how much is it going to cost families to get into this? It's free. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, no charge. Wow! Yeah. Well, that's fun. It's free. Just show up. Just show up just, and walk just around. Just come in and, yeah. and have fun. What are the hours? Uh, on Sunday, or excuse me, on Saturday, it's uh, 10 to 4 to 5 for the vendors. Okay. okay. Now, what's going to happen at 2 o'clock, we're going to start selling wine tickets. Okay. And it goes from 2 to 8. So we're asking the vendors if they would like to stay open, they're welcome to. But if they need to go home or they have other family issues, 
we're allowing him to close down his wrap the tent. But the wine walk will go until 8 o'clock. And that's $20? $20, that's a, or $20 for mm -hmm. the wine walk. And you get a, get a wine glass and a wristband. And then uh, on Sunday, it's from 10 to 4. Mm -hmm. And so um, we have a car show. It's going to be a great show on on, um, uh, on Sunday. We're going to have the Kern County Fire Department. If the weather provides, we're going to have the helicopter come in and do rescues. That'll be at the Kermy Gee, or excuse me, at Petroglyph Park. And uh, so the, they're going to bring search and rescue over. Uh, the Actually, the forestry is bringing some fire trucks. There's going to be a whole group of fire trucks and firemen there. They're mm -hmm. bringing a lot of equipment over. I asked for two fire trucks, and they just bring in the whole fire department. It's amazing. Oh, how we're, we're really excited. We want to thank Kern County Fire Department for participating like they are. Uh, the police department has just been wonderful. They got full staff going to be out there. So it's just everybody is working so hard. Uh, the street department, uh, the, uh, the parks and recreation for the city, they are just absolutely wonderful people to work with to make this happen. So people got to remember that those folks are also working behind the scenes very hard to make this happen. Right. It's just right. not my face. I'd right. sooner just hide, let them their faces be there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is really neat. Uh, what's your favorite part of it, of, of all the events? Do you have a favorite? Don't have a favorite. Okay. Well, that's a Just politically a, incorrect question. Okay. <laughs> but I will say one thing. I okay. did forget. We have a $500 giveaway oh. at 1 o'clock on Sunday. You must be present. You can go online, RP Festival, uh -huh. print out the ticket. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and then you just take the ticket. You come. You drop it in the box at the... At, uh, uh, at the I'm not sure exactly where it's going to be at. We've been moving it around all morning. But it's going to be the where the radio station, be, Mr. Corbett will be there, BC, and we'll put that, you can put it in the box there. you got to be present to get to get the $500. We've got 500 crisp dollar bills that i got in my desk. We'll be ready to go. So Somebody's going to win it. Yeah, that'll be oh, great. Oh, <laughs> that's, that'll be fun. Uh, so um, do you, have you... Um, taken part in the intertribal powwow. Will I, you say? Yeah, or have you? Yes, well, well, I I run around so much, I get over there and I make sure it's running right and I talk uh -huh. to Little Deer. And, uh -huh. and, uh, uh -huh. and But she has a great handle on that. Yeah, uh -huh. See, I, sure. I, I make sure all the folks that's in, in, in our group, they, they, they know what they're doing and they can handle it and then I don't have to worry about it necessarily. They can come to me for issues, but, but I have a great group of people working. She has a great staff. Uh, and I can just go on all afternoon telling you about the great people who are working for us and making this happen. And it's in the hundreds. Mm -hmm. You know, we're well over 100 with volunteers and all the people behind the mm -hmm. scene that makes this happen. Boy, this thing is powwow really is a just... community favorite also. Yeah. Uh, I've it's never been to deal. a powwow. I've mm -hmm. kind of always wanted to go to one just to see mm -hmm. what it's about. And uh, how would you describe a powwow for me? Oh, it's um, a very um, friendly atmosphere, mm -hmm. family friendly, okay. and with beautiful dancers and music, okay. and and it's uh, really exciting. And it's nice to go and see the heritage and all the costumes. Mm -hmm. and, and, I'll bet uh, they're beautiful. They are. They're yeah. absolutely gorgeous. I'll bet they're beautiful. We have one on the front cover of our East Kern magazine mm -hmm. for the Daily Independent mm -hmm. this last Saturday. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's a was beautiful that this one? outfit. Was that no, this one? It was Oh, it was Saturday a paper, one. but it's oh, okay. similar to this. This is probably mm -hmm. too small to yeah. show our viewers yeah. here. It was a young girl with, with a costume on mm -hmm. her, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do they teach people how to dance, or they just perform? It's a performance. I think it's, it's both, isn't it? I, is it think, yeah, yeah. I think it's educational as yeah. well as performance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they do, at one point, invite the public to get up and join them mm -hmm. and dance also. Well, we're, we're just about at the end. We have a... Uh, less than 30 seconds here. What would you, what haven't I asked you would like to share with our viewers? Uh, I think we've covered it. I just want folks to come out and enjoy themselves. Uh, I think we just, let's all pray that we have good weather. It's mm -hmm. nice. We can just yes. maybe short sleeve or yes. maybe light jacket. It would be right. great. And, right. and just come enjoy it. You know, we've uh -huh. got a lot of folks coming from all over to put this on for us. We want to give you know, we want to show support to them mm -hmm. so they'll come back next year. Mm -hmm. You have some a good artist. Who was your, do you have the artist coming back, the Grammy Award? Uh, right? Hopefully next year. Okay. We're talking about our Carlos okay. McKay. Yes. yes, we are talking to him right now for okay, maybe good. next year. Okay. So, yeah. Well, 
Yeah, well, all right. Any closing thoughts from you, Maris? I would just like to say that I appreciate the community coming out and supporting it and giving support to our national treasure, our petroglyphs. Yes. Hopefully we'll brand our community for our petroglyphs and we'll be a tourist des destination. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Appreciate you sharing Good. with thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you.